can actually start with the presentation. So, uh, hello and welcome to the third um, public demo of RipeStuff. My name is uh, Christian Teuschel and I'm a software engineer at Ripe MCC. Today's agenda uh, actually consists of five points. Um, at the beginning, we will give you some administrative guidelines on how the presentation will run and give you some tips um, if you have questions or want to actually um, participate in the discussion. Um, the second part will be an introduction to RipeStep. This is mainly a recap of the previous um, demonstrations. The third and the main uh, point will be a live demonstration of all the features we implemented uh, in the last four weeks. So uh, the fourth part will be uh, questions and uh, mainly giving feedback to what, what you have seen so far. And uh, five will be actually the end of the live step demo. So um, for questions, um, if you want to uh, um, question uh, during the demo, um, you can actually use the Q&A feature of WebEx and uh, we try to actually respond as soon as possible. Um, there is actually also a dedicated time um, frame at the end of the demo where we can uh, have an uh, extended discussion or uh, question and answer um, time. So. Um, when you actually want to talk to us, um, could you please use a headset and an external microphone? Um, for uh, Apple users, um, it's also possible to use an uh, iPhone headset. This will work with a Reason Mac. So um, when you have a question, uh, please use the Ask Microphone function of your Web WebEx control panel and then wait until you will be called. Um, before you um, state the question, um, could you please uh, state your name, the name of the person or the subject the question is for, and well, try to be concise. Um, extended questions, or if you feel that your question will um, take a longer time to, to, to answer or will actually raise some kind of discussion, um, please uh, save them for the um, Net working group list. Um, so, well, um, this is actually the recap of the previous demos. What, what we um, actually intend about right step. So, uh, actually, at uh, Ripe MCC, we have got a lot of um, data about IP resources, internet resources in general, um, with a lot of measuring. Um, systems like TTM, uh, our, uh, RRC, so the risk um, uh, data or uh, the address data. And uh, actually we want to try, we want to combine all this data into one modular and extendable uh, toolbox, which can um, for you act as a one stop shop for your information need on internet resources. That mainly means that we provide you with statistics, um, meaning you can actually go back in time um, and query all the data we are collecting and um, you can actually have a, a inside view on um, the data um, if it's uh, either aggregated or on different uh, levels of uh, detail with zooming and we also provide you with status information this will mainly um, cover uh, real-time data which we which we can provide to you um, via the RipeStack application. Another point are um, permalinks. Um, so each result you um, receive on uh, RipeStack will be associated with the permalink. So it will be easy for you to actually share um, the um, information you get on RipeStack. Another important point will be multiple output formats. Um, so you can actually use the data um, on our service for different purposes. And um, this is just a general note. Um, um, we have, uh, in a way, um, a transparent and agile development process, which means that uh, we are going to um, 
uh, develop this in a successful um, successfully um, way. So actually we add new features as they are ready. So uh, on this uh, screen mockup, you can actually see some of the ideas like the data aggregation or the prefixes or uh, like the net over uh, continents. And on the right side, some way to actually navigate through the data and also the possibility to actually get the data in this essay format like plain text, PDF, CSV or something else. Okay, one word about the, uh, about the public demos. Um, the public demos are actually a feature of our SGL um, development process. Um, we are going um, to have the uh, public demo every four weeks. Uh, and in these demos, in these regular public demos, we're gonna present you what we have done um, within the um, last four weeks. And uh, actually we are gonna, um, we base our development process on the feedback we get from our users and not only feedback it will uh, also influence also the usage uh, of the service will influence the, the development process so um this cannot be uh, stated enough um, you get the tools you deserve so uh, please get involved in the development process and deliver a lot of feedback um, <clears throat> Still, right step, the, the application is uh, still uh, in beta, so it's still a work in progress. So if you want to uh, hear more, or if you, if you want to have more information on our development process or about the RiteStat idea in general, please uh, feel free to visit the Ripe Lab. And under the section RiteStat, you can actually get all the information uh, concerning RiteStat. So uh, this will be the time when we actually um, go through the uh, live demo. So I will, I will switch to the browser. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna start with, with an AS. Um, so actually um, I choose 1205. Um, <clears throat> And we will go through uh, all the modules uh, briefly. Actually, um, the modules we covered in previous demos will be in a way skipped and we just focus on uh, new stuff we actually added. Um, <clears throat> the first module is the prefix. Uh, the prefix is originated from an AS, um, which mainly will uh, just list all the prefixes which were, um, uh, which were announced by this AS. And um, this is actually not a new uh, module, but we actually enhanced it by some new uh, functionalities, like the methodology link. You can see on the red, on the right top corner, which gives you gives you a kind of description of what the data set is about and uh, a general methodology which uh, was used behind this uh, module. Another new um, feature um, is the, um, the user um, query profiling, which you will, which you can actually see the results from it in the bottom line, which states how long um, the data was uh, actually um, processed. So in this case, it was about 1,000 milliseconds, so around one second. The data for this um, module took, uh, took around one second to actually uh, be processed. And another valuable feature of uh, the profiling um, is the, um, the reference ID. So actually each uh, query uh, gets an identity and with this identity, we can actually identify um, a specific uh, query. So whenever you want to report an error or something um, strange happening in a module, you can actually copy this uh, ID and then send it to us and we will immediately know uh, which uh, query you are meaning. So um, the next module um, is also um, a module which was already presented by the last uh, demo. But uh, in contrast uh, with the last uh, demo, we actually enhanced this one to span a much wider uh, time frame. So actually the data for this, uh, for this module actually goes back more than 10 years. And that was achieved by changing the um, database uh, backend. And uh, we actually pointed our the data, um, data source for this uh, plugin um, was actually changed to uh, a more
more complete and uh, an even faster uh, database. Um, the same goes uh, for the prefix distribution, um, which uh, only um, get enhancement by changing a uh, different uh, data backend, but in a way it's uh, the same functionality as I presented in the last uh, presentation. Um, geolocation, I think we can also skip because it was presented uh, in the first and in the second demo. So um, we can hop to the next new feature, which is the ESPERT length module. Um, and this gives you actually an idea of um, how far each uh, AF uh, actually is away um, in, in, in the sense of AF path um, from our measuring point. So um, we're uh, stating three values, a minimum um, path length uh, and two average path length. The rest of the first average path length will um, take the AF pretending into account and um, oh, actually will not take it into account, whereas the second one will uh, calculate the um, average path length um, with the AS pretending. So if we, for example, take this uh, AS 1205, which is located in Austria, and um, compare the path length on the location on the Vienna Internet Exchange to our uh, measuring point, we see that the minimum um, path length is actually one. So um, each ring actually is, represents a value of one. And uh, all the other values, so the average values for, from all the other peers are between um, 1.8 and 1.9 um, AS path length. So uh, in this case, uh, we see that the uh, AS pretending is not taking effect because we have the same value for the for the average with uh, pretending as also for the for the average value without pretending. <laughs> then um, the next module will be the visibility module. This uh, module actually shows um, um, where on on uh, our measuring point this AS can be uh, visible. So um, actually we show this information on three different uh, detail levels. The first one is the aggregation on the continent and the second one uh, will be an aggregation on the uh, city. And the, and the um, last one is actually um, the uh, RSC location itself. So if we, for example, take Europe, we see there is a visibility of 58%. So this is again an aggregated value. So it means it's an average over all the, all the cities we have actually probes in there. And um, in this case, uh, it's um, a little bit strange because we have a very low visibility. For example, in Germany and uh, in uh, England, we have about uh, less than 50% visibility also in Italy. Um, for example, in Germany, we cannot um, go uh, to the third level of uh, details because we only have one uh, measuring point there. But uh, for example, in Amsterdam, if we click there, we go to the last level of details because we have the, uh, two uh, measuring probes there. It's RSC0 and RSC3. RSC, uh, so um, I think that the right rules um, um, module um, is uh, also not really an, uh, a new module which needs any explanation, which uh, leads us to the next thing, um, which concerns the comment buff. The comment buff um, was actually improved by um, having the ability to um, to reply on a certain comment. So if you actually want to reply on a specific comment, just click the reply link under the comment and your comment, if you post the comment, will be uh, threaded under this uh, comment. So uh, after we have seen what we have uh, got uh, as new features for ASIS, I think we can go over to prefixes. And uh, for the prefix, I will choose 193 slash 21. And uh, again, with this one, we uh, will skip the um, 
modules which were presented in previous demos and we'll only focus on um, the modules which are uh, actually um, added in the last few weeks. So uh, the prefix overlap as well as the uh, update graph and the routing consistency um, should be familiar from the last demo. And um, one uh, new feature we actually added, uh, not as a module, but as a, as a feature for the module, um, is um, concerning blacklist. Um, last time we had actually quite uh, a lot of display uh, error problems where we actually uh, were showing a lot of strange uh, floating point values on the y-axis. This got fixed and uh, also we extended the time frame, the observation time frame for the blacklist uh, module from one year to five years. So um, uh, actually new model uh, module um, for the prefixes uh, is the origin elasticity which uh, in a way uh, shows uh, which AS actually was announcing um, this prefix over time. In this special case, we see that it was always announced by the same AS. Then um, the next module um, is in a way the same uh, as for the AS, as just for uh, prefixes. So it will show the visibility um, also aggregated on the different uh, level of details for this prefix. So I think um, we can go over to the last uh, module, which uh, actually gives you an idea of the assignments um, within our prefix. So uh, actually, if you are querying for a prefix, um, we uh, look up the allocation for this prefix and then give you all the information of all the assignments within this allocation. So uh, in this case, we have uh, just one assignment, which, which is 100% uh, assigned. Um, and the status uh, for, this, uh, for this assignment is uh, provided independent. So uh, geolocation and whose data, uh, I think, can also be skipped. So uh, this will bring us to the um, next stage. Um, Due to the recent events in Japan, we actually created an event page for, for the Japanese Earth page, where we actually tried to measure the impact of the earthquake um, on the internet inter inter infrastructure. And as we uh, could see here, uh, all our measuring, um, for example, like uh, DNS monitoring, DTM or like Atlas, we are not really observing any uh, significant effect. <clears throat> so um, what we have done on this page were actually uh, a com comparison between the um, visible prefixes uh, before the incident and after the incident. And concerning the prefixes, the visibility of the prefixes, we had only a drop of 2%. And 2% is not really significant. It might um, happen usually um, without the without this um, special incident. The same actually goes true for the AS plus length. Um, we had there even a smaller um, drop, uh, which was only 0.2%. Uh, uh, so in general, from our point of view, the impact of the earthquake in Japan was very little, uh, almost neglectable. <clears throat> but we also included another um, um, graph which uh, was um, which actually shows the, the, the traffic from the Japanese internet exchange and uh, here you can see that after the incidents we got a huge or significant uh, traffic uh, drop but um, I mean still we cannot really say if it's uh, due that peop a fewer people were actually using the internet or if it was a reduction in the availability of the internet resources. So uh, this actually uh, concludes um, the live demo and we can return to our slides where we can um, see or actually summarize the key features of, of um, our presentation. So uh, what was actually uh, new? Uh, new in the, in the last four weeks were added the user uh, query profiling, the methodology, and two new graph types. 
the line graph, which was used for the, um, AS, uh, for the prefix AS history, and the spider graph, which uh, was used for the AS path length. Then we added uh, five uh, new modules. One of the modules were the prefix AS history, prefix assignment, AS prefix visibility, and the AS path length. Then we also added an event page on the earthquakes in Japan. And uh, we also did a lot of improvements. Um, for example, we, um, added a, uh, we added the ability to reply on comments in a threaded way. We also did uh, work on the styling and um, the raw data output, which uh, is in the format of YAML, uh, was clean, um, so it can be more useful for uh, further processing. Then we also have some improvements for uh, um, previous model, modules, which were already uh, implemented. Um, for example, we um, changed um, the data source backend towards a faster and uh, a faster um, database with uh, more complete data sets. Um, as already mentioned, we uh, cleaned the blacklist uh, output and increased the observation time frame to five years. And um, further, we uh, um, fixed uh, numerous small bug spots, uh, which you can actually see in the change log. So, well, um, is going to be the time for questions and feedbacks. And I think um, if we have any questions, um, we should state them right now. I mean, it's, it's mainly about, um, do you like the ideas, uh, what we have implemented? Do you like the styling? Do you have any concerns about uh, what should be implemented in the in future steps, and or are you in general satisfied with the direction we are going? So, um, if there are no questions, um, I think uh, we can just uh, state how you can give us feedback. Um, so maybe later you come up with ideas you want to uh, send to us. Um, then there will be the, the way of either uh, send us directly an email, an email on rightset at rightset.net, um, or you can use the common feature on our website, but um, you have to take into account that these uh, comments will be public. And another way would be um, the right step uh, section on the right lab article. Or our preferred way to actually start discussions are the measurement analysis and tools working group, either the homepage or the mailing list. Well, um, this concludes the end of the of the third uh, public demo, and the next uh, right step public demo will be on the 19th of April at the same time. So. Um, if you have any more questions, um, please uh, go to the to the slides and um, and uh, all the other web pages we stated in the slides. And then uh, we hope to see you next time. And thanks for attending.